everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I'm going to be talking you through what you can do now you've finished your mocks, had them back and how you can come up with a plan to improve in the little time you have left. So I know that lots of you would have just completed your mocks, maybe you're about to get them back, maybe you've had them back already but what I'm going to talk you through is how you can use your mock results to transform any grade C's and D's into A's and A stars. So I'm going to take you through three steps, how you can analyse your test, how you can come up with a target, and make sure you stick around for the third one because this is the key one I know you want to know and that is what you can actually do to transform your grade in terms of revision strategies in the time you have left and even better yet to go with this video I've created a free download so click the link in the description and what I'm going to talk you through in terms of analyzing your test and setting goals I've created a little document to help you do that yourself so just to click the link and download it so step one is how to analyze your test the point of doing tests is yes to have practice of what it will be like in the actual exam but it's also an opportunity for you to know your current strengths weaknesses and then from that come up with a specific plan to improve so it is essential that after every test especially your mock exams that you do spend time analyzing and what I recommend is something called marks analysis so let's go through what marks analysis is so marks analysis the M stands for maths a is application, R is reading the question, C is clarity of answer, K is knowledge, and S is statements per question. So if we go through what each of these actually mean, what you need to do is go through your test and see anywhere that you've lost a mark, however many marks it might be per question, you need to identify what was the skill. So if it was a maths question and you lost two marks, we do two tallies in the table to represent two marks lost to a maths skill. Application, now around 45% of your entire A-level will be application questions so it's highly likely that in terms of proportion of questions available you're probably going to lose a lot of marks on application plus it's tough so don't be surprised if you lose a lot in this area but these are the types of questions where you're not just being asked to describe or explain using your knowledge it will be you're given an experiment and you have to suggest a reason for the results or you might be given an unknown chemical unknown disease and suggest an explanation for why something happens so basically you're applying what you do know to an unfamiliar familiar situation. The R reading the question, this one is basically as it says, maybe you misread the question, maybe you did a describe answer instead of explain, or maybe you misread some of the information, because I put that within this tally as well. C, the clarity of answer is another really common one for why people lose marks. Clarity of answer means you didn't write anything incorrect, you just didn't get the mark because you missed a key word, a key phrase, or maybe you didn't quite explain it comprehensively enough. So that's a really common one to lose marks on to help improve at that flashcards are a great way to help you to remember all key marking points but we'll come back to the idea at the end k is knowledge this means you just left it blank you didn't know the answer or maybe you did write something but it was incorrect and the final one is s statements per question and what this means is everything you wrote got you a mark you just didn't cover all of the marking points so you didn't have enough statements to get full marks. So spend time going through your mock, filling in this table, and what you will hopefully find at the end is that one of the skills, or maybe two, stand out that that's where you lost most of the marks. And maybe you'll find that some of them you lost hardly any marks on. And that will give you an indication of what your current strengths are and your weaknesses. And I always describe those weaknesses as your gold mine, because if you now know where you are losing those marks, you have the power to to transform your grade, which is your gold mine. So let's go into step number two, which is setting yourself targets for how to improve. So SMART targets is what I'd recommend. And yes, it is another acronym. So SMART targets, the S stands for specific. You have to set yourself an exact activity you're going to do to improve at that skill. Not just say, I'm going to revise and improve at application questions. Instead, it might be, I'm going to complete three application questions linked to the heart topic. For example, the M is measurable. So that means whatever you set, you have to be able to physically tick off that you have done that activity. So again, you can't just say, I'm going to improve the application because how are you going to measure that? There are ways, but not very easily. So you're better off setting an exact activity because that is specific and you can measure that you've literally completed that activity. Next then we have A, which is achievable. And we also have R, which is realistic. And I often think of these two together. You just need to pick an activity that you can realistically 
realistically achieve. And that might be in terms of the resources you have available or the time you have available or what your current ability is. So you need to be realistic about what you're setting because you have to be able to achieve this target. And then lastly is T and that is a set time phase. So you need to give yourself an exact period of time that you're going to complete this target over. So if it's your mocks, you might be wanting to set a target that you're going to complete over the next month. So if it was, let's say clarity of answer was where you kept losing the marks, your target, which will be completed over the next month, might be that for 20 minutes every day, I'm going to be using flashcards to really test my knowledge and memory of key marking points. And you'll do that for an entire month. So that is something specific. We can measure, did you do it every day for 20 minutes? We've set the time phase of 20 minutes daily and for a month. So that is to give you an idea of the sorts of things you could set as a smart target. Now, if you do like that idea of flashcards, but you think it's gonna take you so long to make flashcards, you won't be able to do that target, then you can check out my flashcards I've created for the entire AQA and OCR specification, both this year's spec and the 2025 spec, which has over 750 cards. It covers all of the key marking points and key terms for the theory to save you that. So if you do wanna get those, they're in the description below. And then the final step is activities to help you to improve from a D or a C up to A's and A stars in as quick a period of time as possible. And I know this is what you've all been waiting for. Now, the first thing I would say is to make that level of improvement, it is possible. Students have done it before, but it's not very common. So if you are serious about improving from an E or a D up to an A or an A star, it has been done, so we know it's possible, but it will take a lot of commitment, consistent effort and hard work on your behalf. And if you're not willing to put that in, then you need to be expecting you're not gonna make the improvements. If you're willing though, to to put in the hard work consistently from now until your exams, then you are really in with the chance of making that level of progress. So let me tell you about what I would recommend you could do in that time that you're putting in this effort to try and improve. First thing is improving your understanding and your memory of the knowledge, because some of the questions are knowledge-based, so testing the knowledge of the theory. Some of them are application, but application means applying your knowledge. And if you don't have that knowledge in the first place, you're not gonna get the knowledge marks or the application marks. So don't don't jump into exam questions too soon. I would recommend that you would spend 20 minutes every day going through flashcards. And you might want to start with topics that you find the hardest to remember because you want to dedicate more time to that area so that you have more time to work, improve and improve your grade overall. So get used to this habit of 20 minutes daily. And if you're thinking, where on earth am I gonna find this 20 minutes? You could do it on your bus journey to school or in the car on the way to school. Make use of what is otherwise dead time, meaning you'd just be sitting there doing nothing. So make use of that time and then you're not actually going to feel like you're using more of your evening, for example. Or it might be you don't want to do that because maybe you get car sick. Just find 20 minutes that you're going to do each day, whether it's 20 minutes before dinner, you know dinner's going to be at this time, this is my 20 minute flashcard point, now I can reward myself with some food. Step one is 20 minutes every day doing flashcards. The next thing I'd recommend is blurting. And you might want to do this at the start of the week when you're going on to a new topic of flashcards. So do yourself a blurt for a topic and see what you can remember versus what you can't remember. And that will help you to prioritize some of the flashcards as well. So do that blurt at the start of the week and then do it again at the end of the week once you've done a whole week of flashcards dedicated to that topic. And you should then see by the end of the week, you can remember so much more. And then the final thing I recommend is exam questions and you should be doing at least one hour of exam questions every week even when you're not revising for a test. So if we put that together as a whole package of what you're gonna be doing, for each week, start the week doing a blurt. And the blurt will probably take you 20 minutes maximum because you need five minutes to blurt everything down and maybe 15 minutes to look at your notes or one of my videos to fill in the missing gaps. You also need to be doing 20 minutes of flashcards every day. Then at the very end of the week, you're going to do the blurt again. So it's an extra 20 minutes at the end of the week. And then towards the end of the week as well, you need to find one hour to do exam questions. So it is quite a lot at the start and the end of the week because not only are you doing the flashcards on those days, you've got to do a blurt and at the end you've got to do a blurt and an hour of questions. But like I said, if you want to make 
several grades progress or you're really aiming for that A star, it does take a lot of hard work, dedication and effort. So if you don't think it's going to be possible to do that much, maybe slightly bring it back a bit and you could say you're going to do your flashcards every other day. But if you do want to make that kind of improvement, that is what I would recommend. So those are the three key steps of how to improve from E's, D's and C's up to A's and A stars following your mock. And as I said, if you do want to get all of this information in a little free pack, then click the download link in the description. But for now, best of luck with analyzing your mocks and I shall see you next week.